Hello friend, welcome back to this session here. We will understand the AWS S3 service details with different question. So the first question is. Question 1. What is Amazon S3? Amazon S3 is object storage built to store and retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. S3 is a simple storage service that offers industry-leading durability, availability, performance, security, and virtually unlimited scalability at very low costs. Let's move to the next question. Question 2. What can I do with Amazon S3 that I cannot do with an on-premises solution? Amazon S3 lets you leverage Amazon's benefits of massive scale with no upfront investment or performance compromises. By using Amazon S3, it is inexpensive and simple to ensure your data is quickly accessible, always available, and secure. Let's move to the next question. Question 3. What kind of data can I store in Amazon S3? You can store virtually any kind of data in any format. Let's move to the next question. Question 4. How much data can I store in Amazon S3? The total volume of data and number of objects you can store in Amazon S3 are unlimited. Individual Amazon S3 objects can range in size from a minimum of 0 bytes to a maximum of 5 terabits. The largest object that can be uploaded in a single put is 5 gigabytes. For objects larger than 100 megabytes, customers should consider using the multi-part upload capability. Let's move to the next question. Question 5. Can I have a bucket with different objects in different storage classes? Yes. You can have an S3 bucket that has different objects stored in S3 standard. S3 Intelligent Tiering S3 Standard IA S3 One Zone IA S3 Glacier Instant Retrieval S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval and S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Let's move to the next question. Question 6. What does Amazon do with my data in Amazon S3? Amazon stores your data and tracks its associated usage for billing purposes. Amazon will not otherwise access your data for any purpose outside of the Amazon S3 offering except when required to do so by law. Let's move to the next question. Question 7. Does Amazon store its data in Amazon S3? Yes. Organizations across Amazon use Amazon S3 for a wide variety of projects. Many of these projects use Amazon S3 as their authoritative data store and rely on it for business critical operations. Let's move to the next question. Question 8. How is Amazon S3 data organized? Amazon S3 is a simple key-based object store. When you store data, you assign a unique object key that can later be used to retrieve the data. Keys can be any string. And they can be constructed to mimic hierarchical attributes. Alternatively, you can use S3 object tagging to organize your data across all of your S3 buckets and or prefixes. 
Let's move to the next question. Question 9. Can I use S3 transfer acceleration with multipart uploads? Yes. S3 transfer acceleration supports all bucket level features including multipart uploads. Let's move to the next question. Question 10. How do I get started with interface VPC endpoints for S3? You can create an interface VPC endpoint using the AWS VPC Management Console. AWS Command Line Interface, AWS CLI. AUS SDK or API. Let's move let's next question. Question 11. Is there a quota on how many access points I can create? By default, you can create 10. 000 access points per region per account on buckets in your account and cross account. Unlike S3 buckets, there is no hard limit on the number of access points per AWS account. Let's move next question. Question 12. How do I write access point policies? You can write an access point policy just like a bucket policy. Using IAM rules to govern permissions and the access point ARN in the policy document. Let's move to the next question. Question 13. Can I disable entirely direct access to a bucket using the bucket hostname? Not currently. Not currently. But you can attach a bucket policy that rejects requests not made using an access point. Let's move to the next question. Question 14. Can I replace or remove an access point from a bucket? Yes. When you remove an access point, any access to the associated bucket through other access points and the bucket host name will not be disrupted. Let's move to the next question. Question 15. What is the cost of Amazon S3 access points? There is no additional charge for access points or buckets that use access points. Usual Amazon S3 request rates apply. Let the next question. Question 16. How do I get started with S3 access points? You can start creating S3 access points on new buckets as well as existing buckets through the AWS Management Console. The AWS Command Line Interface CLI. The Application Programming Interface, API. And the AWS Software Development Kit, SDK, Client. Let's move to the next question. Question 17. What is versioning? Versioning allows you to preserve, retrieve, and restore every version of every object stored in an Amazon S3 bucket. Once you enable versioning for a bucket, Amazon S3 preserves existing objects anytime you perform a put, post, copy, or delete operation on them. By default, Get requests will retrieve the most recently written version. 
Older versions of an overwritten or deleted object can be retrieved by specifying a version in the request. Let's move to the next question. Question 18. Why should I use versioning? Amazon S3 provides customers with a highly durable storage infrastructure. Versioning offers additional protection by providing a means of recovery when customers accidentally overwrite or delete objects. This allows you to easily recover from unintended user actions and application failures. You can also use versioning for data retention and archiving. Let's move to the next question. Question 19. How do I start using versioning? You can start using versioning by enabling a setting on your Amazon S3 bucket. Let's move to the next question. Question 20. Is there a minimum duration for S3 intelligent tiering? No. The S3 intelligent tiering storage class has no minimum storage duration.